Sharon Rachel Osborne is a British-American television personality, entertainment manager, and author. She is married to heavy metal singer-songwriter Ozzy Osbourne and came to public prominence after appearing on The Osbournes, a reality television show that aired on MTV, which followed her family's daily life. Osborne later became a talent show judge on television shows, such as The X Factor and America's Got Talent. Osborne is credited with reviving her husband's heavy metal career by founding the Summer Ozfest tour. From 2003 to 2006, she hosted her own television talk show The Sharon Osborne Show, which was syndicated to various US channels and also shown in the UK on Sky One. In 2010, Osborne was a contestant on NBC's The Celebrity Apprentice, in which she finished in third place, and became a co-host on the CBS talk show The Talk. Osborne has also released three autobiographical books and two novels. Her first autobiography, Extreme, debuted at number one on the Sunday Times bestseller list, and went on to become the most successful female autobiography ever. Chapter 1, Early Life Sharon Rachel Levy was born on 9 October 1952 in London, United Kingdom, as the daughter of Don Arden, who was a music promoter and rock and roll entrepreneur, and his wife, Hope. She has a brother, David. Her mother was of Irish descent and her father was Ashkenazi Jewish. Osborne revealed she was surrounded by violence during her childhood and that it was a normal occurrence to see her father threatening someone, or brandishing a firearm. Osborne's father, Don Arden, was a rock and roll entrepreneur who managed Black Sabbath and fired Ozzy Osbourne from the group. Levy began dating Ozzy Osbourne in 1979 after Black Sabbath fired him, and took over his management from the Arden organization. Levy coordinated the recruitment of a backing band for the recording of the Blizzard of Oz album, and helped Ozzy launch what became a successful solo career. Arden resented his daughter for dating Ozzy and managing his career. In her memoir, Osborne relates that he had robbed her, once tried to kill her, and once told Ozzy that she had tried to seduce him, to turn Ozzy against her. She soon lost contact with her father and did not speak to him for 20 years. In an interview in 2001, she commented that her father has never seen her children, and that he never will. Osborne had told her children that their grandfather was dead but they unknowingly saw him for the first time when Osborne was shouting abuse at him on a street in Los Angeles. When asked who she was shouting at, she replied, Tony Curtis. They were reunited in 2001 and he then had a role in their reality show, The Osbournes. In August 2004, Osborne stated her father had Alzheimer's disease and she paid for his care in the last years of his life. Osborne's relationship with her mother was also damaged. At the age of 17, Osborne lost her virginity and realized, two months later, that she was pregnant. By her account, pressure from others, principally her mother, influenced her decision to have an abortion, which Osborne has described as the biggest mistake in her life. While visiting her parents on a later occasion, her mother's dogs attacked her and it was some time before her mother appeared to call them off. She was pregnant at the time and subsequently lost the baby. According to a 2009 article in The Guardian, Hope Arden was a cold woman who became even stranger after a serious car accident, something which Osborne said unhinged her. When Osborne was informed of her mother's death, she said oh, what a shame and simply put the phone down. Chapter 2, Career? Chapter 2 Section 1, Ozfest A series of high-selling albums and world tours followed through the 1980s, eventually bringing about Ozzy's popularity. In 1996, Osborne created the Ozfest Summer Touring Festival. It went on to become a regular rock occasion and celebrated a 10th anniversary in 2006. By 2007, the ticket prices had reached £76 and Osborne announced that the tickets would be free to allow more people the opportunity to attend the concert. Prior to the founding of Ozfest, Osborne approached Lollapalooza, another rock-slash-pop festival, to request that Ozzy play at that year's festival, only to be rejected and told that Ozzy was uncool and too drugged up. 
It was then that she decided to launch her own festival. Controversy ensued when she pulled the plug on Iron Maidens set three times in one performance. She also harassed the singer Bruce Dickinson, and threw eggs at the band. Chapter 2 Section 2 Sharon Osborne Management In light of her success managing her husband, Osborne branched out into managing other acts by creating Sharon Osborne Management. The new company, with Osborne as its sole employee, managed artists such as Gary Moore, Motorhead, Lita Ford, The Smashing Pumpkins, and Coal Chamber. She co-managed a band called Cube, with cud guitarist Mike Dunphy. Cube were signed to Polydor Records but had limited success. She has also turned down career guidance requests from Fred Durst, Guns N' Roses, and Courtney Love. Chapter 3 – Television Career Chapter 3 – Section 1 – Early Work Osborne gained celebrity status as one of the stars of MTV's reality show, The Osbournes, which followed her family's daily life, and had a national audience. As the person who negotiated with MTV to screen the show, she is often credited with bringing about her husband's emergence from heavy metal icon into mainstream celebrity. The show began airing in early 2002, and when, in July 2002, Osborne was diagnosed with cancer, she insisted that filming should continue. The final episode of the show aired in the US on 21 March 2005. MTV's British affiliate has been airing the show since 2003. The show brought MTV its highest ratings ever in both America and Britain. The Osbournes' Beverly Hills home has since been sold and the Osbournes have taken up residence in another home in Beverly Hills. Her Beverly Hills home was later seen in The X Factor during Series 2. The show saw that Osborne was responsible for the livelihood of 12 dogs and employs a dog walker named Cherie. From the mid-1990s until the end of the Osbournes in 2005, she was primarily based in Los Angeles with the rest of her family. Osborne earned an estimated £11.5 million from the Osbournes. In 2009, she was included in Yahoo's top 10 TV moms from six decades of television for the time period 2002 to 2005. In 2003, Osborne became the host of her own television talk show, The Sharon Osborne Show which was syndicated to various US channels and also shown in the UK on Sky One. The show was meant to be a reflection of her personality and home life, similar to her reality show but with the inclusion of guest interviews and performances. During the episodes, she conducted some of her interviews on a giant bed. However, the ratings were never successful and critics panned her inability to perform the basic tasks required of a talk show host, such as reading cue cards and conducting interviews. The show was cancelled in early 2004 after one season. In 2006, UK TV network ITV commissioned a new chat show, initially to be called Mrs. Osborne Presents, but eventually just named The Sharon Osborne Show. Osborne signed a deal with ITV for a reputed £2 million. The show began on Tuesday, 29 August, 2006, and was scheduled to run for six weeks in the 5 p.m. weekday time slot. The premiere episode proved a close competition as the show received 1.9 million viewers with 17% share, 400,000 viewers ahead of Richard and Judy on Channel 4. Her second show attracted 2.1 million viewers. However, Ratings appeared to decrease after Channel 4 moved its game show Deal or No Deal, hosted by Noel Edmonds, into the time slot, with Osborne managing 1.2 million viewers compared to Deal or No Deal's 2.9 meters. Channel 4's The New Paul O'Grady Show returned on Monday 25 September 2006 with 2.3 million viewers compared to Osborne's 1.6 million. Osborne was a judge and mentor on the UK's The X Factor every year, from 2004 through to 2007. In the first series she mentored the 1624S and chose Roberta Howitt, Cassie Compton and Tabby Callahan to represent her in the live rounds of the show. The best placed of these was Tabby, who finished third overall. 
The final was contested between Simon Cowell's act Steve Brookstein and Louis Walsh's act G4, with Steve winning. Osborne's outburst against Steve on the night of the final is widely credited with helping him to win, although according to her autobiography he was well ahead at all stages of the voting. In the second series she mentored the 25 and overs, and selected Andy Abraham, Brenda Edwards, Chico Slimani and Maria Lawson to contest the final rounds. Andy Abraham finished in second place to Louis Walsh's act Shane Ward. During this series, the judges were again required to bring the selected candidates to their homes. Osborne chose her Beverly Hills home as a suitable location, which saw Osborne inviting her neighbors and husband Ozzy Osborne to attend live performances by the candidates. During Chico's performance, he jumped into her functioning fountain with a live microphone, and proceeded to splash water. Osborne also appeared in the spin-off show The X Factor, Battle of the Stars. She was not required to choose her celebrity singing contestants but was selected to manage the 1624s which were made up of Nicky Sanderson, Matt Stevens, and Michelle Marsh. In the third series of The X Factor in 2006, she was mentoring the 25 and overs, and selected Ben Mills, Dion Mitchell, Robert Allen and Kerry McGregor. Kerry and Dion were voted out in a double elimination on the 28th of October, Robert was voted out on the 18th of November and Ben was voted out on the 9th of December, sending Osborne out of the competition. During the filming of the third series, Osborne lived at the Dorchester Hotel in central London. Osborne was criticized for her outbursts on the show, where before a live show in Series 3 she reportedly spoke out against who wants to be a millionaire. Presenter Chris Tarrant, who was in the show's audience prior to filming. Tarrant had made a joke about her husband Ozzy to which Osborne took offense, but most of her outburst focused on criticizing Tarrant's recent infidelity to his wife Ingrid from whom he was in the process of separating. It was rumored that Cowell, fellow judge and creator of the show, was displeased with her performance in series 3, and was thinking of replacing her and Walsh for the next series. However, it was confirmed that Osborne had been contracted to return for the fourth series of the show. She then appeared in the fourth series along with judges Cowell, Walsh and new judge, Danny Minogue, and mentored the girls category during the series. During the first live show, aired on 20 October 2007, Osborne walked out on the panel after learning of two of her own acts, Kimberly Southwick and Alicia Bennett, being in the bottom two. However, on the Paul O'Grady show, aired on 23 October 2007, Osborne confirmed she would return on the next episode and stated that it is part of her personality to say things in the heat of the moment and not to contrive anything that she says. Two weeks into the live shows, a number of happy slapping videos of Emily Nekanda, the only other act in Osborne's category, appeared in the media, apparently showing her beating another teenaged girl. The resulting backlash resulted in Nakanda withdrawing from the show. On the 17th of November, Bennett was voted out of the competition, leaving Osborne with no acts halfway through the series. Chapter 3 Section 2 Later Work Osborne joined the judging panel on the second season of America's Got Talent, along with Piers Morgan and David Hasselhoff, replacing Brandy Nord. Osborne later worked on the show with Howie Mandel and Howard Stern as judges and Nick Cannon as host. The season premiered in the United States on 5 June 2007. In her first episode, Osborne came into a conflict with Piers Morgan when she felt he judged a child contestant too harshly. She threatened to leave the show in the middle of filming, saying I didn't sign up for this, but was talked out of it. The incident was shown on air. Osborne has since stayed with the show for its third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh seasons. The new season was announced in a promotional video shown during a commercial break for season 7's second live show. Osborne initially stated that she will not return for the season, but later said that she was staying with the show for now. Following this, 
She announced she was quitting after a dispute with NBC and the producers of Stars and Stripes involving what she believed was disability discrimination against her son Jack. On the 6th of June 2008, it was announced in a statement on behalf of Osborne that she has decided to step down as an X Factor judge after four series on the show. The statement read Sharon would like to thank the wonderful British public for their enormous support during what's been an exciting ride. She would also like to take this opportunity to thank Simon Cowell and ITV while wishing them all the best for the next series. A spokesman from ITV commented she has been a tremendous judge and mentor on the program, but we respect her wish to leave and wish her the very best. Osborne was replaced by Cheryl Cole. During an interview on Piers Morgan's Life Stories, broadcast on the 22nd of February 2009, Osborne admitted that the reason for her departure from the X Factor was her fractured relationship with Minogue. She stated I didn't enjoy working with her at all and didn't fancy the prospect of spending six months sitting next to her. Osborne hosted the second season of Rock of Love, Charm School with co-hosts Ricky Rackman and Daniela Clark on VH1. Osborne had a physical altercation on 13 December 2008 with contestant Megan Hauserman on the reunion special for the show after Hauserman made derogatory statements about Osborne's husband, Ozzy. Hauserman reportedly filed a report with the Los Angeles Police Department and has since filed a lawsuit against Osborne, claiming battery, negligence and infliction of emotional distress. In 2011, Osborne reached a settlement with Hauserman. In July 2008, Fox announced that the Osborne family would be hosting a new variety show titled Osborne's, Reloaded. The show started filming at CBS Studios in Hollywood in December 2008 before a live audience. The show premiered in March 2009. Fremantle Media North America is producing the show. The show was cancelled after its premiere episode. In March 2010, Osborne appeared on NBC's The Celebrity Apprentice, coming in third place. From its inception on 18 October 2010 until her departure in 2021, Osborne co-hosted the CBS talk show The Talk. This decision came after CBS cancelled the soap opera As the World Turns. The show is similar to The View and seeks to address motherhood and other contemporary issues. Osborne was the last original co-host following the departure of fellow co-host and series creator Sarah Gilbert. In September 2010, Osborne made a return to the X Factor at the Judges' Houses round of Series 7 where she assisted Walsh at Adair Manor, County Limerick, Ireland to pick the final three contestants of the over-28s category, then in September 2012, she joined Walsh again this time in Las Vegas, for the ninth series Judges Houses segment of the competition, to help him choose his final three groups. Osborne has expressed interest in reprising her role on the judging panel, notably in September 2012, when she said that she would love to return for the show's tenth series. Media outlets reported in December 2012 that X Factor producers had approached Osborne for a return in 2013, reportedly to replace Talisa. In April 2013, the show's creative director Brian Friedman said that he was confident of Sharon Osborne's return, following her departure from America's Got Talent and replacement by Heidi Klum. It was later announced by ITV that Osborne would indeed be returning for the 10th series of the show, replacing Talisa. She returned to the judging panel alongside Gary Barlow, Nicole Scherzinger, and original panelist Walsh. During the live shows, she mentored the over-25s category which included Lorna Simpson, Shelley Smith, and Sam Bailey. Bailey was eventually announced as the winner of the show on 15 December, marking Osborne's first victory as a mentor in the show's 10-year history. Osborne did not return for the 11th series of The X Factor UK and was replaced by Cheryl Fernandez Vecini. In 2014 and 2017, Osborne appeared as a guest panelist on ITV's daytime program Loose Women. On 1 June 2016, it was announced that once again, Osborne would return to The X Factor for the show's 13th series to replace Cheryl Fernandez Vecini. She judged alongside Cowell, Walsh and Scherzinger. 
she once again mentored the over-25s category, choosing Sara Alto, Relly C and Honey G as her final three contestants. Alto went on to become the series' runner-up. Although initially casting doubt on returning for another series due to her commitments with the talk, Osborne returned to the X Factor for the 14th series. This time she again mentored the girls' category, her last act Grace Davis finished as the runner-up. Osborne was initially confirmed to return for the 15th series as the fifth judge during the live show's portion of the competition but later declined the offer to return, feeling she wasn't needed on the panel. In 2020, she portrayed herself in Season 5, Episode 2 of Lucifer. Chapter 4, Media Appearances In January 2003, Osborne and the rest of her family hosted the 30th Annual American Music Awards. The night was marked with constant bleeping due to some of the lewd and raunchy remarks made by both Osborne and Ozzy. Additionally, the night was met with some controversy, as critics panned their hosting and presenter Patricia Heaton walked out midway in disgust. In January 2005, she was contracted to feature in a television advertising campaign for UK supermarket chain, Asda and later in 2007, Osborne became the new face of Galabingo when she was featured in television advertisements promoting the gambling website. She has co-hosted one of the Royal Variety performances with Jonathan Ross. Osborne appeared in Days of Our Lives, It's a Boy-Girl Thing. On Friday 15 June 2007, Osborne guest-hosted the Friday Night Project with Justin Lee Collins and Alan Carr. Osborne also made a cameo appearance on 23 June 2007 in an episode of the science fiction series Doctor Who. The episode The Sound of Drums saw her appearing in a spoof party political broadcast, which featured testimonials from British celebrities such as Osborne and the band McFly showing their support for Mr. Saxon to become Prime Minister. On 20 February 2008, Sharon Osborne co-hosted the 28th edition of the Brit Awards at Earl's Court in London, along with her husband and daughter Kelly. During the awards Osborne caused controversy and sparked complaints by calling Vic Reeves, who was presenting one of the awards a pisshead and a bastard after he appeared to be drunk, although he claimed that he was having trouble reading the auto cue. On the 22nd of August, 2008, Osborne took part in the 2008 Media Guardian Edinburgh International Television Festival in Scotland. In 2009 she co-hosted, WWE Raw with her husband Ozzy. On 1 April 2010, Sharon Osborne joined Cindy Lauper in the launch of her Give a Damn campaign to bring a wider awareness of discrimination of the LGBT community as part of her True Colors Fund. The organization campaigns to urge straight people to stand up with the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community and, and stop discrimination. Other names included in the campaign are Whoopi Goldberg, Jason Mraz, Elton John, Judith Light, Cynthia Nixon, Kim Kardashian, and Clay Aiken. Anna Paquin is also part of the campaign and came out as bisexual. This news clogged the Give a Damn website. Osborne has a recurring voice role as Mama Hook in the animated television series Jake and the Neverland Pirates, which was broadcast in 2012. In 2016, Osborne appeared in two videos for Peter, explaining why she gave up wearing fur and encouraging others to do the same. Chapter 5 Books Sharon Osborne's first autobiography, Extreme, was published in October 2005 and tells of her difficult childhood growing up with her father, Don Arden, and also documents the highs and lows of her marriage to husband Ozzy Osbourne, shedding light on areas of her life previously not commented on. Domestic violence, drug abuse, alcoholism, affairs, bribery, colon cancer, robberies, a plane crash, therapy, and cosmetic surgery are also documented in the autobiography. Published by Time Warner Books, it went to number one on the Sunday Times bestseller list where it remained for 15 weeks and sold over 621,000 copies in hardback, becoming the biggest selling autobiography since British records began, beating the previous record set by David Beckham's autobiography by 100,000 copies. In March 2006 it won Biography of the Year at the British Book Awards. 
The autobiography has proceeded to sell in excess of 2 million copies which has become the most successful female autobiography ever. Osborne later released another autobiography named Survivor, the title coming from Surviving Cancer. It was released in 2007. In August 2013, Osborne announced on Twitter that her third autobiography named Unbreakable, would be released on 10 October 2013. Chapter 6 Public Image On the Sunday Times Rich List 2006, Osborne was listed as the 44th richest woman in Britain and the 60th richest woman on the 2007 list. In the overall British list in 2006, Osborne and her husband appeared together as the 554th richest people with a combined wealth of £100 million. As of 2008, the couple was ranked as the 724th richest people in Britain with an estimated joint wealth of £110 million. Osborne has sent her son or daughter's feces in Tiffany boxes on more than one occasion to people she felt had unreasonably criticised her or her family. When a journalist criticised her teenage children, Osborne sent a box of excrement with a note saying, I heard you've got an eating disorder. Eat this. The popular British comedy Dead Ringers, features and spoofs Osborne quite prominently alongside her husband. Also, she was spoofed by impressionist Ronnie Ancona on Alistair McGowan's Big Impression, and was also featured in Comedy 2 DTV. On Saturday Night Live, Amy Poehler played her on Celebrity Jeopardy. Skit on 14 May 2005. Sharon Osborne appeared in Season 9 of Celebrity Apprentice. On 16 May 2010, she was fired during the double elimination round. Impressionist Francine Lewis performed an impression of her in the seventh series of Britain's Got Talent. Chapter 7, Personal Life Sharon Osborne met her future husband Black Sabbath vocalist Ozzy Osborne, at the age of 18, while working for her father, Don Arden, who was managing Black Sabbath at the time. When Ozzy was fired from Black Sabbath in 1979, Sharon started to date him and took over his management, as a solo artist. The two were married in Maui, Hawaii, on 4 July 1982. Together, Sharon and Ozzy have three children, Amy, Kelly, and Jack. For years, the Osborne marriage was plagued by alcohol, drug use, and violence, with Osborne having even been arrested for driving while intoxicated. The couple used to physically fight regularly and, according to Osborne, they would beat. She has described herself as a beaten woman when she was at the hands of husband Ozzy where he once knocked out her front teeth. She once retaliated by throwing a full bottle of scotch at his head. The most notorious incident arose in August 1989, when Ozzy was arrested for attempted murder after he had returned from the Moscow Music Peace Festival, and tried to strangle Osborne in a haze of alcohol and drugs. After the incident, he spent six months in rehabilitation as a result of his actions, after which time, Osborne said she regained her strength in their relationship, and did not press charges. In July 2002, after colon cancer claimed the life of Reagan Erin Marcato, the mother of her daughter's friend, then 18-year-old son Robert, Osborne told the BBC that she had adopted Robert, however, when he was later sent to live with his father following a nervous breakdown. Osborne denied having legally adopted him. Chapter 7 Section 1, Health In 1999, Osborne lost £100 after lap band surgery. Osborne commented that being large was an essential part of her persona when she worked for her father and that being larger, she made a more dramatic entrance. On 26 October 2006, she went on the Howard Stern show and revealed that she gained 15 pounds in the last year and would be having her plastic band removed. In July 2002, Osborne had surgery for cancer. She announced it was colon cancer and had spread to her lymph nodes and was more serious than originally thought. She survived the disease against a 33% survival prognosis. Despite battling cancer, she insisted that the MTV cameras document her illness during the filming of the second season of The Osbournes. 
When Osborne's hair fell out during her subsequent treatment, her wigs were custom made by Cher's wig maker. Ozzy Osborne admitted that he fell apart during her treatment and recovery, and it was revealed that her son, Jack Osborne, tried to commit suicide because of his depression stemming from his mother's condition. In August 2004, she founded the Sharon Osborne Colon Cancer Program at Cedars Sinai Hospital. In addition, she was the honored guest at the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation's 2003 Fall Gala, where she spoke of her struggle against cancer. Osborne has lent her support to design limited edition t shirts or vests for the Little T campaign for breast cancer care, which donates money for breast cancer research. Osborne has freely admitted to having extensive cosmetic surgery. As well as documenting this in her autobiography, she appeared on Dr. Phil on 14 December 2006, and commented on everything that had been surgically changed on her body to improve her appearance. She stated that she had had a full ritidectomy, abdominoplasty, mastopexy, as well as many other procedures, but commented that she would not have any surgery performed on her eyes or lips. She has admitted to spending £300,000 on plastic surgery. In early November 2012, Osborne revealed she had undergone a double mastectomy after learning she had a gene that increases the risk of developing breast cancer. Chapter 7, Section 2 Household Incidents In 2004, Osborne's home in Jordans, Buckinghamshire, was burgled by a man who stole gems worth £2 million. The burglar managed to get away with the gems despite being put in a headlock by Ozzy. Items taken during the burglary included wedding rings, an engagement ring, pearl and diamond necklaces, a large 52-carat sapphire ring and two pairs of diamond earrings. After the incident, Osborne appeared on Crime Watch and offered a reward of £100,000 for the return of her valuable jewellery. In March 2005, there was an incident in the Osborne's mansion in Jordans, Buckinghamshire. Ozzy and Sharon were forced to flee their mansion when a blaze broke out as they slept. They were not injured but had to be treated for smoke inhalation. In 2006, another fire broke out at the Osborne's mansion. However, none of the family was at home. Chapter 7 Section 3 Political Statements Chapter 7 Section 3 Subsection 2 Brexit In 2016, Osborne voted for Brexit in the referendum regarding the issue. She subsequently stated in an interview with the Sunday Times that there had been too much foreign immigration into England, and that its society was being adversely affected by it. Chapter 7 Section 3 Subsection 3 Labour Party In September 2019, in widely reported comments made in an interview with The Sun, Osborne said of Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn, Oh my God, I hate him so much. I want to hurt him, I want to physically hurt this man. He is the most arrogant, ugly fuck. I want to hurt him. Oh my God, he is revolting, so ugly inside and out. This ugliness oozes from him, he's repulsive. Chapter 7 Section 3 Subsection 4 John Wayne Airport Osborne has shown support for a campaign to rename Orange County's John Wayne Airport. She said it just gives me the creeps. There has always been this reputation of him of really hating blacks, Jews, anybody that wasn't white. When the airport came, I was like, why would you give this man this honor of having an airport named after somebody like that, who is just a bad man, a really ugly man. Chapter 8, Controversies Chapter 8 Section 1, Iron Maiden At Iron Maiden's last Ozfest performance, on 20 August 2005 at the Hyundai Pavilion at Glen Helen in San Bernardino, California, several negative events took place, allegedly the fault of Sharon Osborne. Osborne's actions were reportedly in retaliation to lead singer Bruce Dickinson slighting reality TV, with claims that this was an attack on Ozzy Osborne himself. During the first Iron Maiden song, several members of the front row of the crowd were reported to have bombarded the band with eggs, bottle caps, and ice. Some reports also say that Sharon's daughter, Kelly, was throwing objects at the band. 
During three of Iron Maiden's songs, the PA system was switched off, cutting power to Dickinson's microphone and the band's instruments. In audio captured during the concert, it is reported that Dickinson can be heard accusing the festival's organizers of deliberately cutting off the band's power. Also unknown to Iron Maiden, played secretly through the PA at the very beginning and end of their set was a tape with the chant Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. On Iron Maiden's departure, Sharon made a few statements on stage in front of the 40,000 people in attendance. She told the audience that while she absolutely loved Iron Maiden, she thought lead singer Bruce Dickinson was a prick and had disrespected us fest since they began their stint with the tour. Her words were met with booing, and soon afterwards she walked off the stage. Iron Maiden's manager, Rod Smallwood, issued a statement shortly after the debacle condemning the attack on the band as vile, dangerous, criminal and cowardly as well as disrespectful to fans who had paid to see the band perform a full unhindered performance. Dickinson later denied making a personal attack on Ozzy Osbourne, did I have a go at Ozzy and Black Sabbath? No. Why would I? But I do find the Osbournes TV series loathsome, and the whole cult of reality TV celebrities disgusting. Chapter 8 Section 2 The Smashing Pumpkins in 2000, Osborne resigned from managing the Smashing Pumpkins by releasing a memo which said, It was with great pride and enthusiasm that I took on management of the Pumpkins back in October, but unfortunately I must resign today due to medical reasons, Billy Corgan was making me sick. In an October 2008 interview, Osborne revealed that she and Corgan had recently made up, I saw him at the Scream Awards. We hadn't seen each other since that whole thing in Germany. The first time we ran into each other and we hugged and kissed and laughed. Chapter 8 Section 3 The Talk In July 2011, Osborne and some of her fellow The Talk panelists were criticized for their conduct when discussing the story of Catherine Keogh. Osborne described Keogh's cutting off of her husband's penis and putting it in a garbage disposal as quite fabulous, Osborne also laughed about the incident with her fellow panelists and members of the audience. Osborne's co-host Sarah Gilbert offered the counterpoint not to be a total buzz kill, but it is a little bit sexist. If somebody cut a woman's breast off, nobody would be sitting laughing. Osborne replied by saying it's different. Osborne later apologized for her behavior, stating she was sorry she offended people and that she did not condone genital mutilation. Osborne's co-hosts on the talk, Leah Remini and Holly Robinson Pete were released from their contracts in 2011. Osborne spoke of their dismissals in December 2011 on The Howard Stern Show, stating, Some people don't really know who they are, and you have to know who you are when you're in something like this. You can't pretend to be something you're not. You have to know your brand. You can't be all things to everyone. Remini later protested her dismissal and leveled accusations aimed at Osborne through a series of tweets. On the 10th of March 2021, whilst speaking on the talk, Osborne defended Piers Morgan's negative comments towards Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, resulting in a heated exchange with co-host Cheryl Underwood. In the same month, a 2018 clip from the talk resurfaced in which Osborne was discussing the Duchess of Sussex's skin color. Osborne said that Meghan ain't black and that she doesn't look black. In response, the talk went on hiatus while CBS conducted a review on Osborne. In a statement made 26 March 2021, CBS concluded that Osborne's behavior toward her co-hosts during the March 10 episode did not align with values for a respectful workplace. Ultimately, Osborne left the show. Chapter 8 Section 4 Fired Assistant Revelation In 2019, Osborne appeared on the British panel show Would I Lie to You? in which guests make statements about themselves and fellow panelists decide whether it is true or a lie. She claimed that during a house fire she made her assistant go back into the house to save pieces of art. She also claimed that she ripped an oxygen mask off the assistant and gave it to her dog. She then proceeded to fire him when he did not find the situation funny, believing he might have lung damage from smoke inhalation, 
saying he showed absolutely no sense of humor during the fire. After the usual deliberations by fellow panelists, she confirmed the incident to be true. The clip of Sharon's story on the show that was uploaded by the official BBC YouTube channel was met with an overwhelmingly negative reception. There was also a considerable backlash from Twitter users. Chapter 9, Awards and Recognition In 2002, Sharon Osborne and husband Ozzy were invited to the White House Correspondents Association dinner by Fox News Channel correspondent Greta Van Susteren for that year's event. Sharon Osborne and Ozzy Osborne were honored for their contribution to the music industry at a ceremony in London when the couple won a Silver Clef Award. Osborne was voted the most amazing woman of 2003, according to a poll published by Handbag.com, a website for women, taking almost a third of the votes cast. More than 7,000 votes were cast in a range of categories. During Osborne's time battling cancer, she attended an award ceremony to collect a gong for the success of her family's television show The Osbournes. She attended the Creative Arts Emmy Awards in Los Angeles with her daughter Kelly Osborne, to receive the Best Reality Television Show Award. In late 2004, Osborne attended the Woman of the Year Awards in London to collect an award that she had previously won at the 2002 event, but was unable to accept due to illness. Osborne was voted Freeman's Celebrity Mum of the Year in 2006, fending off competition from Jordan, Kate Moss and the Duchess of Cornwall. In 2006, Osborne's autobiography won Biography of the Year at the British Book Awards. There is a wax figure of Osborne at Madame Two Swords. She is an honorary board member of the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Chapter 10, Filmography Chapter 10 Section 1, Biography Extreme ISBN 978-0-7515-3766-6 Survivor ISBN 978-0-7515-4054-3 Unbreakable ISBN 978-0-7515-4000-2 Chapter 10 Section 2 Fiction. Revenge ISBN 978 0 